everybody, welcome back to ResinNet. Today we are going to be trying out these two molds that I just got from Tamu just a day or two ago. And I have got some resin already made up. And I'm going to use one of my cut off water bottles for this. I'm going to go ahead and just pour in my eight ounces. I don't think I'm going to need this much. But uh, if I don't, that's okay. I've got a different project I can use the rest of this for, I think. So I'm going to start off with, whoops. I like to mix my, if I'm going to use a color in my resin, I like to mix it in something besides my, my measuring cup because I like to reuse these. These are wonderful. They've got the black numbers on the sides. And I buy them usually in packs of 50 or 100 on Amazon. And let me grab a baby wipe. Clean my mat off. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to be making these little foo dogs um, that I really love. I've got just a collection of a couple of different sets of these little uh, foo dogs, Chinese foo dogs. And so I am going to see if I can try to make myself a little bit of a jade color, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I've got some Pixis alcohol inks here. I've got my pinata black. And um, I am going to start off with, with white, okay? I don't want it really an opaque white. I want it kind of a milky, a milky white where it would maybe bring, let some of the light through, you know. Let's see what we got here. actually kind of a fog, a fog color. Um, you can still kind of see through it like the kind of like the color of hot water or or a foggy day. Okay, so I'm going to start with that. Now I'm going to start with my turf green, which is one of my darker greens that I have for my Pixis. And I'm not I'm going to do just like maybe two drops at a time because, you know, I don't want to I really want my color to turn out the way I want it to. So I don't want to get too carried away with the colors. Let's see here. What we're doing with this color. I've got kind of a pretty, it's kind of a pretty green, a little darker than a mint green. It's pretty though. Can see here. Okay. Wow, that's already looking pretty good. So now I'm going to add just one little drop of this ocean, which adds just a tiny bit of a blue tone, but I don't want much. Okay. See if I can tone down the green just a bit. Okay, it's still pretty see-through in here, so now I'm going to do just one drop of my brighter green. This is Kiwi. Okay, can you see our color here? It's looking pretty. It is kind of a jade color when it's all solid like this, but you know, we're going to be pouring a smaller amount, so it could turn a bit more translucent than I want it to. When it comes off the stick, it's pretty translucent. So, I'm going to add a bit more white. And I might have to add something a little stronger than this white alcohol ink. And I might have to, I don't really want to add pigment paste. Um, <clears throat> I definitely don't want to add any mica powder. At least not right this minute. Let's see. A little bit of a swirl. It's going to be okay. Let's see how I'm doing. 
gosh, when you look at it in a solid way, it is a really pretty color. It's really kind of a jade color right now. But when it runs off the stick, it is definitely a bit too translucent for my liking. Okay, so hmm, maybe I'm going to go ahead and add just one drop of Cast and Craft. I hope this is not going to be a mistake. Just one, maybe just one drop. There we go. Oh, that was a big drop. Big drop. Kind of made, went into a clover. But, okay, let's see what this does. That gives us a bit more of a kind of a milky green, which would be great. I don't want it overly opaque, because you know jade should um, have a little bit of a tone to where some light can shine through it. Okay, that's definitely a little bit more milky now. Okay, my resin's getting just a bit warm. Okay, now we're gonna add one drop. Whoops, get that off of there. I want that in there. One more drop of the dark green. Now, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that might be a little better. So, now what I might want to do is add, let's see, maybe I need to add a dark green and just stir, I mean, just like barely stir it in and not like mix it. Like, do a dirty pour, you know, where you're just kind of blending the color, I mean, you're just kind of adding the colors to each other without blending them. Okay, so it kind of gives a streak effect every once in a while. Let me get one of my, I think I'm going to use one of these with a finer tip and just kind of see if I can mix that around in there so that when it pours, okay, I'm going to stop with that. And I also would like to have just a little bit of, tiny bit of a black streak tiny bit of a black streak, so just like, almost like dots. So I don't want to put a drop of black in there, that would be way too much. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just see if I can get just a tiny bit on the tip of this and see if I can do it with that. Like poke it, <laughs> just poking the black in there. Not sure if it's getting down in there. Might all be floating towards the top. I don't know. Could do just a tiny sprinkle of mica powder, but I don't know that that would have the effect that I'd want either. I'd have to like, like sprinkle the mica powder on the top and then not let it go anywhere else. But you know what? I'm almost willing to try that if I need to. All right, so we're going to, I think this is about where we're gonna have it, okay? It's gonna be our jade color. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray my molds on the inside. There's definitely a lot of little nooks and crannies in here, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple sprays, two sprays, and I'm gonna squish it together so that I can get all inside where this is gonna go, way down deep in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna tip it over, get the excess I got out of there. All right, now let's get ready to pour this. Gosh, I'm excited to see if this is gonna turn out. I just love these little foo dogs, so let's see. Come there with some of our black. Pour kind of slowly here. Oops, I don't want all of those black streaks that we poured to go into just one. So I'm gonna kinda go back and forth here. And I'm using the J. Diction resin that I'm just still kinda trying out. I'm still kinda getting used to it. Um, 
these molds are tall. Well, gosh, what are they? Maybe three inches tall, maybe two and a half or so, and maybe about an inch and a half wide. Might be pushing it, trying to pour these all in one pour. But you know what? I'm going to try it. And I have my air purifier I use. It's kind of a strong one. And when I turn it on high, it blows out really cold air. So usually what I do, if I decide I want to try something like this and do it all in one pour, is I will turn my air purifier on high and then set these on my curing rack with the cold air blowing on them. Okay, so what it does is it kind of helps slow down the curing process. Okay, so yeah, this is gonna be way more than we needed for our resin, which is fine because I think this color is gonna be super pretty. I can definitely find something else to put it, pour it into. I would love to have a mold of these that's a bit bigger. These are just going to be little guys. Go all the way to the top here. You know, one of the things I could have done was give it a good squeeze and make sure that I don't have any bubbles down there, but I would have had to do that before I just filled it up. So uh, that is definitely something you could do. And I probably should have done was when it was about half half full or so just give it a good squeeze around the base and make sure that you're letting any bubbles that might have gotten trapped in there let them escape but uh, yeah so I think okay so for these two to do these two molds I'm thinking it's probably taking about gosh maybe only about four ounces so yeah, I still have quite a bit left. All right, so I'm gonna move these over to my curing rack, guys, and um, when they're cured, I will come back and we will demold them together. I'm gonna give them a quick spray, and then I'm gonna go set them aside and I'll be back, okay? I'll see you then. Hello everybody, I'm back, and our little food dogs are completely cured, so I'm super excited to get these out of here and see how they turned out. These are a um, these will be kind of a matte finish these will not be a shiny glossy finish which is fine with me because they are kind of a textured look and let's see if I can get these out of here I kind of like these kind of molds because you they're stretchy oh my gosh wow wow this turned out pretty good you guys that off of there why it looks so bendy oh gosh so look at this look at this look at the detail on him now these molds came from Tamu if I didn't say that already and how do you think we did on the color what do, what do you think wow this is really turned out really cool really really did so now usually they're um, have a foot on a puppy and then an, and then the other one has a foot on a ball which these do not have these don't have a foot up on anything which is fine with me um, they're just oh my gosh super cool so these little food dogs are supposed to be in pairs to, they um, supposed to bring protection in Chinese culture. So we'll see what they look like sitting next to each other. I'm out of here. Oh gosh, I can see me making some of these different sets here. Okay, and here's the other one. And let's see, how did this ear turn out? About the same? Wow, look. Turned out pretty good. Look at here we go. Here's our little pair. Okay, so now I can decide if I want to come in and do any kind of uh, like gold guild work. You know, if we want to do any kind of like gold leafing on this set. Gosh, it's so cool. I'm going to have to really think about this and decide how I want 
how I'm gonna wanna do it. And what do you guys think? I think they turned out pretty good. What do you think of the color? I think the color is very jade-like, actually. Um, a bit, a bit translucent. Just a bit. I don't know if I can, if I can show you here. It's a bit translucent. And just right now, there's not. I I probably would have done it where there's a few more streaks in it. I do see a little, a few of the spots of black, but not really any of like the darker green streaking that I was trying to get. So the next time I will work on that and see if I can perfect that a bit. But um, yeah, they turned out great. Looks like I might have missed one ear here. So even though I put the alcohol in the molds and I sque squeezed them all together down there, I did Looks like I had a bubble form here at the base of one of the, well those aren't ears, let's see, here's the ear. I don't know what those are supposed to be like. They're not, they're not horns, but, huh, actually I'm not really sure what those are. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there's one on this side and then this one, this side here kind of formed a bubble. But um, I really don't care much about those. I mean, if I needed to, I could just snip it off actually. and and. Uh, wouldn't bother me. But anyway, this was super fun. So I'm going to think about if I want to do anything else to these to finish them off or not. And then I will let you know. Okay. I will see you guys in a while. Hello, everybody. Okay. So I decided not to do any kind of gold leafing work on these food dogs, but I did decide to post this. It came from an impeccablenestdesigns.com and they have this little chart here of kind of explaining the colors and the meanings um, for each color for the food dogs in the Chinese culture and it explains a little bit about it um, kind of mythical creatures and things and for me <clears throat> excuse me it's just kind of for fun and um, something I enjoy the artwork of these little food dogs but um, I just wanted to say I appreciate you all being here and thank you for watching my channel and I hope that you really enjoyed making these with me. I will see you all next time.